a lot of people, even before law school, have heard about uh, terms like frivolous litigation or vexatious litigation. We have a rule, Model Rule 3.1, about bringing meritorious claims and contentions to the court that really covers this type of situation. And there's several different provisions about this rule. It's not as simple as being about a bogus lawsuits. So having said that, let's dive in and take a look at what the ABA rule says in Model Rule 3.1. So it, Rule 3.1 begins, a lawyer shall not bring or defend a proceeding or assert or controvert an issue therein unless there is a basis in law and fact for doing so that is not frivolous. That note, the kind of double negative here. And that includes a good faith argument for an extension, modification, or reversal of existing law. Now, let's before we move on, let's unpack what we have here. Uh, so first of all, this can apply to the plaintiff or the defendant in terms of uh, um, the merits of their case or a claim. Notice that it's not just the your assertion in the case overall of admit of asserting liability of the other party or denying uh, responsibility. It's also, you could have an otherwise meritorious or legitimate lawsuit or defense where the lawyer has raised one argument that is um, frivolous and either legally frivolous, there's no basis in law, they're just making up statutes and cases, or factually frivolous. There are no facts at all to support um, what the lawyer is saying. So it, what your your side your rep that you're representing in the case could otherwise be legitimate, maybe even be the prevailing party in the matter, but you could be subject to discipline because you decided to go that extra step and make an argument or assert something within the case that was frivolous. Now, something that's not frivolous is to make a good faith argument for changing the law. So uh, at this point in law school, all of the students have learned about binding precedent, and it's okay to say, look, I know that this is binding precedent, but it's time for the law to change, right? The, the precedent was wrong, and there's been a few high-profile Supreme Court cases in the last few years where the Supreme Court has overturned 50 years of precedent and reversed a long-standing um, constitutional rule or something like that. So the lawyer who's arguing for that in good faith uh, is um, not going to be subject to discipline just for making a frivolous argument. Um, and the same is true to ask for um, the court to extend a rule a little bit further than they have before um, to modify it or to reverse a previous position. Could also be asking them to overturn a longstanding statute. Uh, it, it, for example, or to apply a constitutional provision in a different way than has been applied before. These are all things you could make legitimate arguments for. What's not allowed is to just lie and make up cases that don't exist or um, to deny that there's a, a, control, a statute that controls when there is a statute that controls and so forth. So let's move on. In a criminal case, we have a special rule. Um, it's always okay to represent a defendant, even if you know they're guilty. So don't worry. It is not frivolous to be a criminal defense attorney for someone who has already admitted guilt. And I don't just mean guilt to you. A lot of defendants, before they call their lawyer, have already given a full confession to the police. It actually can be kind of frustrating for the lawyer that before they're brought into the case, the client has already been read their Miranda rights and confessed to the crime anyways. And now they still are asking for a trial. They're somehow denying guilt, even though they admit, admit they did it. So if it will result in incarceration, you can defend the proceeding to make the prosecutor do their job and require that every element of the case be established. Remember, a lot of crimes have several elements. There's usually a mental state element or a mens rea element. 
and then some an actus reus, some the actual action that they had to have taken, and then usually some other circumstantial factors um, involved. That, um, that if, for example, filing a, a fraudulent document with the federal government and so forth. So if you have a case, it's always okay to make the prosecutor go through the steps of proving every element beyond a reasonable doubt, even if the evidence is overwhelming, even if they caught your client on video um, committing the crime during a sting operation or an undercover operation, um, it's always okay to make the prosecution do their job and actually prove all the elements beyond a reasonable doubt. You would never be subject to discipline for that, and that's not frivolous. Now, remember, the rule applies not only to filing lawsuits, but also to any individual argument, claims, or defenses and or contentions within an otherwise proper case. Arguing to overturn established law is not necessarily frivolous, and a weak criminal defense is still okay. Also, it's okay if you're bringing a case and you need to do discovery to be able to prove that you are right or to win. So filing a claim or defense for a client is not frivolous merely because the facts have not been fully substantiated or because the lawyer expects to develop some vital evidence um, by discovery. You do have a duty, however, to inform yourself about the facts of the client's cases and applicable law and determine whether there are good faith arguments in support of the client's positions. So if in good faith you expect to be able to prove your client's side, um, once you get some evidence through discovery, you think you're pretty sure that the evidence is there, then it's not frivolous. On the other hand, if you are just making stuff up and you have no reason to think that you that there will be such evidence, um, it's maybe, you know, technically there could be, but you don't have a really a good faith belief that the evidence um, is exists that will be sufficient for your side to win, then your case is frivolous. Your side is frivolous. Also, it's not frivolous just because the lawyer believes that the client's position will ultimately not prevail. So in class, I'll sometimes ask my students, is it unethical to bring a case on behalf of a plaintiff when you think it's 50-50, that the client is not going to, it's only 50-50 that they'll win and it's half, half the time they're likely to lose. And the students usually agree that's not frivolous. Well, what if it's only 40% or 30% or it's 10 to 1 against your client? Well, the fact is, it, long shot lawsuits are permissible if you can make some good faith legal and factual arguments, um, offer some supporting facts and make some supporting legal arguments you under the duty of communication with the client you need to warn the client we're probably going to lose like it's 90 percent we're going to lose so the fact that it's a long shot does not make it frivolous it is frivolous though if there's simply no way to make a good faith argument um uh, on the merits of the action taken or support it with a good faith argument for an extension modification or reversal of existing law. Um, remember that defendants in criminal cases have constitutional rights that can limit the, the this do, this rule, the reach of Rule 3.1. So they can make some claims and con uh, contentions. For example, they can assert to their innocence even when the evidence is, of their guilt is overwhelming. The Supreme Court has said that. That, so so they have some latitude that you don't have in a civil case. And that concludes our quick lecture about ABA Model Rule 3.1.